and I just thank God this morning for his word. I had, um, this is, this is, this word has been on, in my spirit for uh, a minute and I had just been holding it and it's so much that was going on um, behind the scenes, so many things that was going on. And so the Lord began to show me how to, to walk in a different way. And I want to share that with you this morning. So if I could, if I had to give this um, message a towel today, it would say how to maintain your peace and your prosperity. So it's, uh, this is really talking about, you know, just how to maintain, how to gird yourself up today. So we're going to look to the scripture in Leviticus um, chapter 26 and verse 6. It says, I will give, give peace in the land and you shall lie down and none will make you afraid. Now, I just love that when God said he would give them peace in the land because some of us need peace in our homes, we need peace in our businesses, peace in our, on our jobs, we need peace in our families, we need peace everywhere in our lives. If we want God to come in and to abode and to move in our situations and in our circumstances, we need to have the peace. So it says um, in um, chapter, Leviticus chapter 26, verse 6, I'll give peace in the land and you shall lie down and none will make you afraid. I will rid the land of evil beasts and the sword will not go through your land. In other words, God will protect your territory. He will protect your atmosphere. He, he'll protect your sphere. So you have to realize, praise God, that this is something that I believe that God wants us to walk in is in peace. Praise God. Um, no matter what's going on in the world, no matter what we're hearing, when we accept Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior, when we give our lives to him, praise God, we can walk in peace no matter what's going on around us in Jesus' name. Peace is something everyone wants, yet few, few people seem to find that peace. You know, and, and, and peace is something, it's, you want that tranquility, you want you want it to be harmony around you. You want security. You know, depending on the situation, it could mean prosperity or well-being. There are various forms of the word peace that's in the Bible. Over 400 times it talks about peace. And so your peace is important to God. Your, you, it, it takes peace when you're trying to ac accomplish something. You know, Pastor taught me this early on. And I had to begin to practice this um, when we first got married because, you know, he was running a business and, and we were, had all kind of projects going on. But he taught me how, he said, no, everything has to be in a peaceful state. You got to fight one battle at a time. And so I have learned, praise God, to try to walk in peace in every area of my life. And I believe that's what the Lord kept sharing with me. Sometimes we can allow the enemy to come in and to disturb and distract our peace of mind when we're trying to accomplish things in the earth. So there are different kinds of peace. You know, there's a false peace. You got inner peace. You got peace with God. You got, and you got peace with man. And we always want to walk in peace with our brothers and sisters. And of course, with people in the world. That's why the Bible said, agree with your adversary quickly. Sometimes you can agree to disagree, but peace is directly related to the actions and your attitude of individuals. But ultimately, it's a gift from God. I thank God that my peace, hallelujah, it is a gift from God because you can't allow people to shift you out of your, out of your peace. You can't allow people to shift you into another minds that are, as Elder Carl so uh, blessed or stirs is singing, you can't uh, let people get you in your emotions, praise God. So you have to realize, hallelujah, that you have to gird yourself up. The presence of peace, in the, it indicates God's blessing on man, uh, 
blessing on man's obedience and faith. So if you're being obedient and faithful to God, praise God, then his presence is there. His presence is, is in your atmosphere. It's in what you're doing, praise God. You know, that's why when I get up in the morning, I pray for peace in my home. I ask God to bless my husband with peace, to bless my children, my family with peace. I, I, I began to ask God, I said, um, I began to rebuke, praise God, uh, the trouble, the conflicts, and all this stuff going on. Hallelujah, because you just never know what will happen. And so it's good to cover, hallelujah, things in, in the morning when you wake up, praise God. But see, the Bible tells us in Isaiah chapter 26, verse 3, he said, if you keep, he will keep you in perfect peace, whose mind is stayed on him, because he trusts in you. See, when you put your trust in God, there are so many times, praise God, that we put our trust in a person, or we put our trust in our, in, in our jobs, or, or, or something else. But when you just totally put your trust in God, when you just say, God, I cannot, I, you know, and Pastor and I do this, and he will uh, confirm this. We, we don't, we trust each other, but when we're believing and trusting God for something, we don't look at each other to accomplish that thing. We come together, we pray about it, and then we look to God. We trust God to do it. Praise God. And you, and that's how you teach your children to pray and put their trust in God. And when it says that uh, because you trust in him, he'll keep you in perfect peace. That's why you, when you, when the, the, fear come up in your heart, when doubt and unbelief come up in your heart, that's when you begin to meditate on the Lord, meditate on his goodness. You, I tell the Lord all the time, God, I don't know how you're going to do it, but I trust and know that you will, and however you handle it, it's okay with me. But the Bible says in Isaiah 48 and uh, verse 22, it said, there is no peace for the wicked. You know, and I, I have been learning this over the last um, couple of months because when you sit your mind out and you set a goal to do something and when you're trying to uh, to keep your word and honor what you said to somebody then you know you run up against all kind of opposition sometimes you you come up against um, things are become challenging and that's because you're dealing with people that don't know God they have not yet accepted the Lord. So you got to learn. The Bible said that's why we have to have strategy. That's why he gives us wisdom. That's why he gives us knowledge. You have the knowledge, but you got to pray for wisdom to know to strategically go in and get things accomplished in the earth. That's why it's good sometimes to be quiet, to keep your spirit in peace. If your spirit is not in a peaceful state, how can you hear what the Holy Spirit is saying to your heart, and if, and, and if it's in your heart, how can you get up and begin to say, okay, God, I, I, I hear that in the spirit. Now let me put that plan of action in, in, into, um, uh, into effect here, and, and let me see how, how this is going to work out. That's how you trust in God in peace. See, believers have an obligation to let the peace of God rule their heart. That's what it tells us in Colossians chapter 3 and 15. This means that we have the choice to either trust God's promises and, uh, by letting his peace uh, rule our heart or to rely on ourselves. And God knows we should not rely on ourselves and reject the peace that God offers. See, Jesus gave, he gave his disciples uh, peace based on the truth that he had overcome the world. See, if you really truly believe that um, Jesus came into this world, he died for your sins, praise God, and then he got up on the third day. If you believe that, and he got up with, not only did he get up, but he got up with all power in his hand, and that same authority is operating in your life. See, if you believe that, that he's overcome the world, then you have to believe that you can overcome in every situation in your world. 
praise God. See, I just, you know, I just refuse. I've come to a point where I, I believe I shared this with Sister Brenda. I was, we were having a conversation, and I was telling, I said, you know, I believe there's something happening in this, in the spirit uh, with me because I said every time a situation of uh, opposition come up, I said I don't seem to get, um, I don't panic. I know I can't, that doubt don't come in, that, that, that worry is not there. I have such a peace on the inside, praise God. And when that peace, hallelujah, it, it overcomes my heart. So this is what God is saying to you today. He wants you to get to a place where that peace is always in your heart. No matter what the doctor's reports say, no matter um, when somebody call and make, they may cancel an important appointment, no matter what happens, no matter what report, you believe the report of the Lord. You trust in God, praise the Lord. And this is what God has been teaching me over the last few months, to trust in him. That's what the scripture means when it say, lean not to your own understanding, but every word that proceed out of the mouth of God. See, this is what you have to do, no matter what your situation, no matter how bleak it may seem. In John 16 and 33, it say, these things I have spoken to you, that in me you may have peace. In the world you will have tribulation, but be of good cheer, for I have overcome the world. So if he has overcome the world, I know he's overcame everything for you and I. See, peace is, a, is the fruit of the Spirit. So if we allow the Spirit of God to rule in our lives, we will experience his peace to be spiritually mind that brings life and peace. Praise God. Now this is what his word is saying. So we should not be walking around worrying and being and, and saying, how is this gonna happen? You trust God that it's gonna happen. Some of us, praise God, we may have a lot of uh, going on. We may not can see the path that we're supposed to, to, to take, but you, you trust God that the Holy Spirit is leading you, guiding you step by step. And when you believe this, praise God, and you trust God with it, you're gonna make your, your you're gonna make it to your destination. You're gonna be victorious, you're gonna be triumphant. See in Isaiah, uh, as we should put our, our trust in the one true God, this is what Isaiah did. Uh, we will live in peace and prosperity. See, the people of God, they rejoice. In, in the time of harvest in Isaiah uh, chapter nine and verse three, because they believed they were gonna have a harvest. And so they, they rejoiced in God. They didn't let doubt, they didn't know if it was gonna be a storm or whatever, but they put their trust in God. See, do you believe God today that your harvest is gonna come to pass? Do you believe that your harvest is here? No matter what the world is saying, no matter what the political climate, no matter what's what someone is saying out of their mouth. Do you believe and trust what the word of God says? See, by the power of God's spirit, uh, people will dwell in peace, security, and the employment of their work. See, sometimes, hallelujah, we have to give, this is why we say work as unto the Lord. Hallelujah, yes, you, you render unto Caesar what's Caesar. But when you can walk in that peace, hallelujah, do what you're supposed to do. Praise God, then God will bless the work of your hands. He will bless everything, praise God, that you put your hands to. Hallelujah, you'll be when you are when you are asleep, when you lying down, praise God, and you and you're sleeping in peace, praise God. Hallelujah. Then I believe the angels are working on your behalf. I believe that praise God that when daybreak comes, he's he then he's loosening other angels to come back into the earth, to, to work things out for you. See, this is why you have to put your trust in God, not in man, because you can't move the mountain, praise God. You can't change people, hallelujah, because people are gonna be people. But one thing you can do, you can go to your heavenly father and he will bless your situation. See, similar, uh, somewhat similar, one of the promises that followed Hezekiah, he has a guy trusted in God's deliverance from the Assyrians. Uh, when he came up against that bell, as a guy, he put his trust in God. Are you trusting God today for your deliverance? Hallelujah. See, I, 
you can I keep saying this, you cannot look to man. God will bless you through man. God will allow man to be a blessing to you. He will put on man's heart to be there to support you. But ultimately, I want you to get it in your spirit to put your trust in God. I want, I want you just to try this today and to get your heart and mind and soul and spirit in a place of peace. Praise God. And you will see, hallelujah, how God began to work as he did for Hezekiah. Because when he came up against the, the general, uh, the people, they were the people, they was enduring in the enjoyment of the fruit of their own labor. But then all of a sudden, here comes the chaos. Here comes something trying to disturb their peace. But see, God knows how to keep you in that thing. In Isaiah chapter 37 and 30, it says, and this shall be a sign for you. This year, eat what grows of itself. And in the second year, what springs from that? Then in the third year, so reap, plant vineyards and eat their fruit. See, God always has a master plan. God always makes a way for his people. Hallelujah, you don't have to uh, uh, be stressing about it. And because of the stress of the impending invasion, hallelujah, that, that was brought on in the land, the land had laid dormant. And see, there's a lot of places in our, in our own lives where we feel like, God, I don't see no movement. I don't see anything happening there. But you don't have to worry. Praise God. You keep continuing to trust God. I remember one day I was sharing something with my husband, and he was, and then he told me, he said, yeah, yeah, I, you, you've been saying that for a long time. And I said, yeah. I said, but I feel in my spirit it's been ready to come to pass. Because I, there's a unity, there, there's something harmonious beginning to happen. And I say, when you get uh, believers that are like mine, praise God, and, and they come together and begin to pray, God can move and something can begin to happen. So if you have anything don't that, that's been dormant, you begin to thank God, begin to praise God. Hallelujah. And see, because that land was laying dormant, what did he do? He blessed them the first year. He blessed them the second year. And he blessed them the third year. God knows how to take, hallelujah, what's in your life, hallelujah, to bring it back to life and make it work for you in Jesus' name. See, God promised food uh, even though it was not farmed, but for our people to enjoy the fruit, hallelujah, years of peace are required to carry out proper cultivation. And this is uh, in Isaiah, read it. It's hard to get things accomplished when you're not in peace, when things are chaotic, when, pe when there's strife, when there are things going on. This is why it's important, hallelujah, to pray to maintain that peace in your life. So the peaceful conditions are blessings from God. Judah's success when they labored in the field and the vineyard and they it served as a continued sign of God's covenant of love. But you know, we know what the scriptures say and we know how the enemy comes. James chapter three and verse 16 through 17 says this, for where envy and strife is, there's confusion and every evil work. How can you get anything done when evil is always it is present? But then it tells us in 17, but the wisdom that is from above is first pure, then peaceable, is gentle, easy to entreat, full of mercy and good fruits without partiality and without hypocrisy. Let me tell you something. You know what? When you're dealing with something and, you, and the enemy come in at the first sign that someone comes in, and they bring a spirit of unrest. They bring a spirit of chaos. They bring a spirit of disorganization to your home, uh, to your job. Immediately, you need to remove yourself and go and pray and ask God, say, Lord, how do I deal with this situation? How do I, get, uh, how do I keep my peace? How do I maintain my peace in this thing? See, this is what you want to know, because see, the devil is self. You know, he's coming, and you know, and, and, and you don't want him to come in and mess up what God is trying to do in your life. And see, I know God is working in some of you all's life. He's setting things up for you, and the enemy, praise God, his job is to come in just like, 
hallelujah, that uh, Elder Carr told us how he, how uh, he, the devil went to um, God and said, look, well, let me try Job. See, you don't know, this may be your test, but you, you got to get to that place where you say, wait a minute now, I'm not gonna let anything just I'm gonna walk this thing out. I'm gonna know when to be quiet. I'm gonna know how to speak faith-filled words. I'm gonna know how to flow through this thing. I'm gonna keep my inner peace, praise God. I'm gonna keep it, I'm gonna stay in peace with man. Hallelujah, I'm gonna be in peace with God. See, you gotta learn how to flow in this thing if you wanna walk and be fully successful in everything that God is calling you to. If you want your healing, you gotta make sure that you stay in peace, praise God. That's the thing I always see, you know, most of you know, hallelujah, my born, hallelujah, is fighting, praise God, in my body a lot of times. But I praise God because, hallelujah, that's why I like to stay in peace. That's why I like things to be in unity around me, praise God, because then God can move, hallelujah, he can move in the situation, he can work things out for you, praise God. But I want to go on and look at David, praise God, I don't want to stay on too long today, but praise God, this is just something that was in my spirit. Because the enemy want to come to kill, steal, and destroy. He want to take everything, tear down, hallelujah, undo everything that God has put in place for you. And see, you've been depositing prayers. You've been speaking his word. You've been carrying on and trying to do all that you know to do. But see, this is the time right now that God wants you to pay attention about, hallelujah, being peaceful in your atmosphere so that you can hear God. So that you can hear what the spirit of the Lord is saying to you, so that you will have the wisdom and the strategy, praise God, to walk this thing out. Hallelujah. So that the when the cake of worms do come, praise God, they, they even though if he do take something, it's not even gonna be a bother to you, praise God, because you see you so blessed. But in Psalms 34, it was written by King David during one of the most agonizing times of his life. He was on the run from, from uh, King Saul. Uh, for a crime that he did not commit. And David ran to the enemies of Israel, hoping to find refuge, but he only encountered more trouble. And that's something, you know, that's why I was sharing with uh, one brother, hallelujah, that's on the line today. He kept saying, he, he said, well, if it ain't one thing, I said, no, I said, pastor, tell us, if it ain't one blessing, it's another blessing. We don't say if it's one thing, it's another thing. Don't help feed the enemy. Don't help him come in and cause havoc in your life. You speak to know if it's not one blessing, it's another blessing. So when trouble comes, you got to know the right things to say. You got to even think. You got to bring them thoughts under subjection and say, well, okay, this happened, praise God, one battle at a time. See, there, see David was dealing with, with a situation in 1 Samuel chapter 21, and he was forced to act and sing. Uh, for the sake of time, go back and read the story, praise God in order to escape their own torture and punishment. See, you have, and during this time, it was after this experience that David wrote Psalms 34. In, in other writings of David's uh, poems and songs, he was writing about being stuck in the mud, being in the pit, or being swept by the uh, rising flood. But though David was still in a situation that should have caused him distress, David sings a different song. We got to sing a different song. We got to speak a new language. We got we got to start decreeing and declaring. We got to start speaking differently. Our attitudes got to change. We got to we got to say some things a little bit differently. Praise God. So in Psalms 34 David uh cools about the goodness and the faithfulness of God. See whether God has moved on that thing or not. Go ahead. I, I believe God is faithful in everything. I believe that, praise God, that he, God is, his goodness and his mercy covers everything in your lives. You know, when, when we pray for you all, when we believe God for you, we're, we're praying, God, let your mercy, let your grace, let your goodness and your faithfulness cover them in the name of Jesus. We believe God that his word, praise God, covers you and that it brings you into a place of success and healing and deliverance. Imagine that David in what was just being uh, one of the lowest of lows in his life is speaking about prosperity. He's still speaking on the goodness of God. He's still talking about how faithful God is. And this is uh, what David says. He said, come, my 
children and listen to me and I will teach you to fear uh, the Lord. Does anyone want to live a life that is long and prosperous? And this is Psalm 34, beginning with chapter uh, verse 11. So he's saying, now come, now listen to me, because I want to teach you something about the fear of the Lord. What he's saying, now I need for you to listen to me, because if you want to have life that is long and that is prosperous, he said, then keep your tongue from speaking evil. Keep your lips from telling lies. Praise God. Turn away from evil and do good. Praise God. And I'm going to tell you all, I love that message that Lacar gave Thursday night when he talked about uh, getting in your emotions. Praise God, you need to go back and listen to Thursday night if you weren't at Bible study. Because we don't, we don't need to get into our emotions, hallelujah, at a time like this when we're trying to keep our peace. When we know that God has given us something to do, that we, we, we got a race to run. Hallelujah, we got a purpose. We got, we got a destination that we're trying to reach. Praise God, we're, we're, we're praying and believing for our deliverance. We're trusting God like we never trusted him before. So you need to keep your inner peace. Praise God, you need to be in peace with man. You need to be in uh, peace with your atmosphere. You need to have that wisdom and knowledge to flow in this thing, because this is not the time, as Pastor say, to misbehave. So you got to search for peace to, and, and, and work to maintain it. See, all good things begin with the fear of God. And some uh, form of the phrase, the fear of the Lord, it's, it's used over 300 times throughout the scriptures. And, and it's important that we have the fear of God. We learn by reading the scripture that the fear of the Lord leads to wisdom, prosperity, understanding, long life, and ultimately salvation. Praise God, the term Fear of the Lord doesn't necessarily mean being afraid of God. It's, it's typically is understood to have a deep reverence, that you reverence God, you respect God, you trust uh, in the person of God. It means putting God above everyone and everything else in our lives. Praise God. So you want to have that fear of God. You want to be able to hallelujah. Hallelujah said, you know, my God, he's a holy God, and I reverence that, I respect that, I trust him, but we're not afraid that he's going to strike us down. Why? Because we're not sinning, we're not out here lying, and we know what the Bible says, sin, praise God, we're not out here uh, doing things that, that are disobedient to God, and if you're not doing that, you have no reason to be fair. God is your friend, praise God. In the book of Genesis, it says that you should know God, and, and what's it said to know him, and to know him is mean, it, it, it's not a surface kind of relationship, it's a deep relationship where you can take everything to God in prayer, where you can tell, share with him, hallelujah, how you really feel, and when you take it to God, and, and you stay in his presence, and you meditate there, praise God, as David used to do. That's why David talked about meditating with the Lord. And when David would get up, praise God, he got up with a plan. He got up with a strategy. He got up and he knew what direction he was going to go in. See, when we live our lives with this understanding of God, good things enter our lives, praise the Lord. David and others, writers of the Bible used to speak about uh, prosperity. And this is one that, you know, don't, don't ever forget any of the scriptures. That's why I try to read my Bible every day. I try to meditate on the word because Je Jeremiah chapter 29, verse 11, it says, but I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans to prosper you, not to harm you. Plans to give you hope and a future. You got a hope. You got a good future. You got, hallelujah, everything that God has promised to you, everything that you 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 desire. He said he would give you the desires of your heart. Don't give up on God. Praise God. Stay, stay in there with God. Hallelujah. Don't just don't give up. You know, the prosperity from fearing God. It's a principle. It's not a rule. See, you know, we can't we can't keep up with the rules and the do's and the don'ts. Praise God. But more uh, times than not, when we are faithful to God, we find that we're successful. See, when you are obedient to God's word, when you're obedient to God, let me tell you something else. When you find, when you reach a place in your maturity with God, you 
don't want to sin. You don't want to be disobedient. You know, you're not going to want to do anything that's going to allow you to um, make God unhappy with you. You know, you got to learn how to speak. You, you then you begin to speak truth, and you turn you turn from evil, and you're searching for peace that leads to that prosperity. See, if we don't follow God's truth, of course, it's, it's, it's going to be difficult to find peace. But it begins with the fear of God. When you fear God, you value his word. You value your Bible. This becomes the standard of truth, good and, e good and evil, and peace. See, these are the seeds that we plant that lead to a long and prosper prosperous life. Praise God. See, when you when you talk, when you really love God, with all your heart, mind, soul, and spirit, praise God, when you really love him, hallelujah, you, you're not going to be disobedient to the Lord, no matter what everybody else do, no matter what everybody else says, you're going to follow God and not man. And you're going to plan, hallelujah, when that peace is on you, that anointing of peace and love is on you, you know, others will see that peace in your life. Others will see that anointing up on you. See, by this, I ask you, you know, one thing David was saying in that last uh, scripture, he says, search for peace and work to maintain it. Praise God. And we live in a world that's thriving on drama right now. See, we counsel, we rage, we scream, we hate. Prosperity is difficult to keep when you are angry or distressed. You know what? And I, I, I tell you this, and I'm trying to close, praise the Lord. But I tell you this, I find it very hard. Hallelujah. Sometimes I, I, I get up in the morning, I say, God, I'm not going to let anything pull me. Hallelujah. Out of, uh, uh, out of my walk and out of my place. And I promise you, it, it, it just be one of those days, praise God. I'm sitting there and all of a sudden I just hear somebody just going off, you know, just cursing like a sailor. Praise God. I'm talking about high management, upper management. Praise God. I'm talking about direct. And everything and then you know sometimes you don't want that in your atmosphere and so i pray for them praise god i don't get mad i don't get angry but you know i asked god i said lord i said you know show me how to to work with this show me how to deal with this and you know he'll give me a strategy every time so that i can keep that peace in my atmosphere and I, today, I want you to do the same thing. I want you to be like King David. I want you to go to God. I want you to, hallelujah, begin to thank God for his faithfulness. Thank God for his goodness. Begin to thank him in advance for everything that you're trusting and believing God for. I thank God for today. I thank him, hallelujah, that I can speak today a little bit better. I thank him for my voice. I thank him for the smart thing. For the small things in my life, praise God. And this is what, what, where you, what you have to do. Start out where you are in God and watch God work in your life. Watch him, how he will maintain that peace in your life. And you know what will happen in your home? You'll find out that, that make that other spouse. They'll, when you flow in peace, hallelujah, then they'll begin to flow in peace. You begin to keep peace, hallelujah, around you, and you watch your children will begin to, hallelujah, trying to walk in that same peace. Praise God. See, what you don't, what, what we need to understand, the Bible says, what, what is of the spirit? It's life. Praise God. So that anointing that you carry in your life, praise God, something will happen in them like it happened in Elizabeth and Mary when Mary was pregnant with Jesus and Elizabeth was pregnant with John the Baptist. See, but there is a spiritual connection, and I know I'm talking to somebody. Sometimes you gotta be the first partaker. Sometimes you gotta be the one to walk in the peace. You be the one to walk in it with a good attitude. You be the one to say, Lord, I'm gonna, I can do this, praise God, and say, I'm not gonna have, hallelujah, chaos. I'm not gonna have all of this uh, screaming and hating, but I'm gonna walk in the peace and love. I'm gonna do what the words say do. So I pray today, praise God, that as you walk in peace, praise God, I know your prosperity is going to open up. So don't you let, don't you dare let anything come out of your mouth. Don't you dare let any thought come in that's going to sabotage your blessing. But you begin to pray and tell God that you're going to speak his truth, that you're going to reject evil, that you're going to search and uh, maintain that peace so that you can
can have long and a, a prosperity and a prosperous life in the name of Jesus. Because see, today is your day of deliverance. Today is your day that you take back your peace. Let the anxiety go. Hallelujah. Let the doubt and the fear go. See, that, that kind of fear is not of God. See, when you really fear God you, and you love him, let me tell you something. When you know, when you're with somebody or, you, you, or your family, you know your family got you and you don't worry about it. You say, I know I can go to my mom or my dad, my sister or my brother. And, and you trust in that. God wants you to have that same kind of peace, hallelujah, when it comes to him. So you today, praise God, accept this thing, walk in it, hallelujah. And I want to, Pastor Lamin, come back and pray. I want to release that kind of peace in your atmosphere because it's time for you to walk in that cross, in your prosperity. It's time for you to walk in your peace and stop allowing the enemy to come in and cause distractions come in and bring that foolishness into your atmosphere. It's time for your business to be blessed. It's time for you to either move up on your job or get a better job. It's time, hallelujah, for you to get that home. It's time for whatever your, your prayer request is, whatever's going on in your life. Even myself, I believe God, hallelujah, for the healing. I believe God for you. I'm standing for you today, hallelujah. And I know that you all will stand in for, for us, praise God. And as we come together and we pray in agreement, don't you know, hallelujah, that God is saying, that's what I'm looking for. That's when things begin to happen. That's when the miracles, the signs, and the wonders, hallelujah, begin to move and manifest.